Hello traders, Damien here. I'm doing the post session review uh, for the uh, channel and for the uh, thread. Uh, today we had two trades, one break even and one winner. And I got taken out prematurely. Um, we had a nice um, sell off today. And uh, we'll go over the trade, we'll go over the reasons for entering and we'll go over why I managed it the way I did. Uh, but before we do that, uh, this is still the uh, small account that I opened with uh, $5,000 for you guys to benefit you guys, the retail traders, the little traders, the ones that are trying to see um, how to create some wealth uh, or change a lifestyle or enhance your income or whatever it is that you want to accomplish from trading. I am here to show you uh, in a very transparent way that um, this is a very small account and this is futures in market conditions that are extreme at times with over 100 point swings. And I'm here to show you how you can still effectively trade um, this strategy um, on a small account on intraday order flow and still um, be consistently profitable. Um, we will have losses. We had a losing day yesterday, but one trade today, just one trade, okay, almost eliminated all the losses from yesterday and the drawdown from yesterday. And if you're interested in what happened yesterday, since we didn't do a post session review, it is in the uh, live stream. It happened to be a live stream day, um, yesterday being Wednesday. Um, it was a very long one, got stuck in a, in a trade. Um, um, all, uh, most of the afternoon and, and uh, we had to call it quits because it was just getting way too long. The good part is that towards the end of that live stream, um, there was a lot of questions asked and there was a lot of, uh, you know, price action um, questions and answers with uh, with the chart as an example. So I think that if you revisit the last probably 30 minutes of that live, that live stream from yesterday, you will have a lot of golden nuggets and a lot of beneficial information that you may have been struggling with as those were the type of questions that were being asked. Um, again, this is a live account here. Um, this was the p l for the day. Let's bring in the spreadsheet um, first. Say that we started with the uh, 5,100. Um, we uh, had uh, minus $216.25 yesterday. This was the drawdown since we were trading two contracts. Uh, today we had $192 on a single contract. So in this column, we enter what would the single contract trade um, be on the PL side. So that's what we enter here, which basically taking the PL of the day and dividing it by two. Okay. Um, there is a slight discrepancy in the uh, balance. This is the actual account. You can see that this is a 385 from today, 385 from today. And this is the balance here. And the balance here, according to our spreadsheet, is five thousand fifty three dollars and fifty cents it's actually 83 cents a little higher i think that may be some slippage or things of that nature once the uh, statement settles i will update it per the statement value which should include um that um little slippage and that will cause the balance to be uh identical all right um so for the most part the uh the money management formula says to code down to one contract the reason why that is is because it it tries to hold off the account is most vulnerable in the beginning right so it takes that into account in the money management formula what it does is it it wants to trade at the contract value that makes more sense to the account okay because it's not going to ask me to increase contract value until i pass six thousand five hundred dollars that is a threshold that we put on it so the minimum is that the minimum before an increase of position size is six thousand five hundred i told that i wanted to start uh, with two contracts but it automatically wants to push me down to one because of that risk factor i'm going to stay at two um, but i am going to continue entering at one you'll see once we get to the six thousand five hundred it will it this will switch to two and we'll stay at two until uh it tells us to switch up but for the most part to get to that threshold a little quicker and because we are um, profitable I'm going to overrule that safety feature um, because I already told the market that I wanted to start I mean I already told the system I want to start with two and you know we're, we're not adding to our drawdown now or getting deeper and deeper in the hole which is which is causing us to uh, to get into one uh, back to one contract so we'll stay where we're at we'll monitor closely 
Um, and you know, the, the delta is the threshold that you want to scale down. You say, well, if my account balance is $450, it's gonna automatically, $4,500, it's gonna ask me, to, it's gonna tell me to scale down. So that is the uh, situation there, and that's how these things work. Um, we don't need to get too deep involved in this. I am gonna make a separate video uh, specifically on the delta and the minimums and this and that, um, but that's gonna take some time. I think there's other pressing issues that we can tackle first, like, the, the uh, trading plan and a couple of other things. But this is the uh, the balance. This is the PL for the day. This is the balance on the real account. Spreadsheet matches. Just wanted to see that, you guys to see that. And now let's get into the trading. <clears throat> on the uh, longer term account, um, I'll bring that in. <clears throat> my, li my limit order did not get triggered. Price just didn't really make it there. It just made it to this area here and really has really shot up here to not test the highs. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna get filled. Um, if the market ends up making a new structure high since we had a proper correction, this order will be changed. I will probably place it somewhere um, in this area right here. Um, as I can see some very clear areas where the buyers did defend and, def and, and try to defend well and where the sellers attacked, okay? So another good area is somewhat in this area right here. So we see we have a good defense here. We have a little one there that actually went somewhere. Resistance and um, support and then became resistance. And then, so we'll figure it out. We'll scale in and look at the order flow a little better. We'll look at where the absorption has taken place, where the footprints are. Um, but again, what do we expect from this market? <clears throat> Since we had an overextended market, we had an amazing projection. We all overall, overall, because of the factors involved, what did I tell you guys? We're expecting a shallow correction and the reasons why, huh? And because of the absence of structure, we weren't really sure where those, um, um, where that was going to come into play, but we had that basic expectation. And sure enough, um, the, the price uh, action uh, and the expectations uh, are playing out. We had a very shallow correction, stayed above the 50%. Um, I said, I told myself, I wanted to be long in this, at this price level because that was an SOS um, two signal and with a swing of this magnitude you at least want to have an SOS two signal um, and why is it an SOS two signal we have a ratio and we have immediate structure you know two things that form confluence and that equals SOS two signal and SOS one signal will be what we actually got which is price only achieved a ratio and did not achieve structure um, or in some cases depending on where that structure is sometimes you reach structure and you don't reach a ratio you know out of the two signals the structure one is a stronger one so out of the sos one signals i'd rather have a pullback to structure without a ratio than a pullback to a ratio without structure um, i hope that makes sense to you guys but that's that's the case i think i'll be canceling this order uh soon in fact i will be canceling it right now because Today is Thursday, tomorrow is Friday. I'm not gonna play that game with the weekend and the gap and all this stuff, okay? So the, the order is canceled and next week, it looks like we'll probably have some better trading conditions, better swings to work with, and, a, uh, and an order flow that we can probably engage from the longer term. Having said all that, back into the intraday order flow. So what are we looking, what did we see when we got to this market? And automatically we see that regardless of the um, longer term, regardless of the large swings, we have a very directionally uh, biased market to the downside here, all achieving what appears to be proper corrections and, and, and extensions. Um, and then we have this here. So now we have to identify, okay, we can pretty much assume that there's a main swing somewhere in here. We, we don't have to be rocket scientists to see that. But let's say that you are a little disoriented. You look at this and you're like, oh my God, you know, there's, there's a high all the way up here somewhere. Um, we made a low somewhere here and now we're here, you know, if I get short anywhere here, am I looking to put my stop all the way there? Can I afford that? No, that would be ludicrous, right? Plus you're looking at, this was yesterday. This is, um, you know, five o'clock, uh, yesterday. So how do we dissect this? How do we, how would, how do we break this down from an intraday order flow? So we have to start somewhere. So where is our main swing in today's price action? And we see that we have this. Okay, we have this, and then we have price coming down to here. Do we have a proper correction from that? Where does that proper correction come into play? Do we get one here? No, price did not 
achieve a 38% there. So we're forced to this one. Okay, now we ask, is it a clear high and a clear low? Yes, did price have a proper correction? Yes, now we have a main swing from today that we can project forward, okay? And that's at minimum where you wanna start, right? So now we see that we have complex price action here, up and down and everywhere else, and we don't make a new structure high until price gets this. We determined that this was our main swing. We don't break above, close above until we get up here, right? So now we can say, okay, now we have something that the market has achieved, okay? And now we have something that we can do what? Project forward, okay? So we understand that right now, okay, as it stands, no matter what it looks like to you, our main swing moving forward is this, right? This is the high, this is the break above, close above. So, so that it doesn't become too angled, let's just do this, okay? Now we also have to understand that we have some smaller swings that achieve things uh, and, and this and that. And we see that in the most immediate price made a new high here, higher low file by a, a new high. And then we had complex price action and then made another new high, um, which made this the most immediate higher uh, low. We had a retest of the area and then we had another high followed by a correction and followed by us. Okay, so where are the harmonics here? Well. Let's find things up a little and let's play the harmonic game, right? We already know that this is our main swing, right? And we already know that we had a correction there. Now, is this a proper correction? Let's find out. There's only one way to find out, okay? The answer is yes. We had a proper swing there, proper correction. So that is a proper correction. That is something that we can project forward. So taking this here, and putting it there puts us surprise, surprise, okay? And the market rolls over. How about on the more immediate scale? Can we play the harmonic game? We have a clear high, we have a clear low, and a proper correction. Doesn't matter what order flow it is. We're looking for harmonic moves, right? So, surprise, surprise. Now, we have a proper correction here. We have an individual swing with a proper correction. Is this high and this low overall have a proper correction as a whole? The answer is yes. So that is another swing that we can project forward. So now we can draw this one as one swing. Okay, and I'm changing the pitch so we can keep them separate. Okay, and we say, where is the proper correction to that? Well, this is all complex correction, right? Where is the lowest point before the new high? This is new high, the lowest point is somewhere right here, right? Here or here, it doesn't matter. Um, they look to be about the same. Okay, oh, sorry about that. Let's take that projector forward. Where does that go? Surprise, surprise. Okay, surprise, surprise. It attempted to correct and inform the proper correction, as we can see. Okay, um, this on its own had a proper correction and as a whole had a proper correction because if it had a proper correction as a whole, it most definitely had a proper correction on its own. Okay, so now that we have price respected here and price respected on a larger scale, does this one, if we project the forward from its proper swing, does it pan out? Okay, it falls a little short, but as you can see, as price got here, it found a little bit of exhaustion and tried to correct to the downside here. So all in all, uh, really harmonically balanced market, um, really nice order flow to work with, but the scale is large and you have to pick an order flow that you're looking to trade, right? So as the market comes into this area and starts pushing down and starts retesting this area, starts pushing down, we identify these areas as areas of what? Areas of interest, areas where buyers and sellers came in to defend that area and achieve something, right? That's the violence that we like to see, okay? So as I came to the market here, market opened somewhere around here, okay? And the market had achieved the new structure low because at this point, this was the main swing right here, right? We already determined that. And the price did not make a new high and the expectation failed at this level here. So now the market has spoken that it wanted to come lower, okay? The market pushed down here, pushed down, came down, pushed down to this low right here at 9.32. I wasn't looking to get long, even though that was a nice area to look for longs because the area had held up very nicely. So I wasn't looking for a long here. But what I was telling myself is that if the market breaks here, okay, 
breaks this high here on the most immediate order flow, I would be interested in getting long, okay? As the market came into this area here, had a nice reversal, came down, it was not an area that I was looking uh, to get short on because of the risk, right? It's a small account. I'm at, you know, 171. The, the, the stop was like 70 uh, points away or something like that. Let's see what was the stop? Let's, let's, let's do it for the sake of... Uh, for the sake of transparency and honesty. I wasn't looking for a short here because my stop had to be up here, okay? 67 points away, minimum, okay? That's way too much on two contracts for this uh, for uh, this account. So I needed better risk reward. So as price came down here and made a, uh, a correction and came down really low here to make another correction, remember, I'm expecting a new structure low, okay? I was expecting um, the market to make a new low overall because that is the expectation. The market had a proper correction into an area of interest, just the risk wasn't there. So I originally would have been short here had the risk reward been there, which kind of contradicts or um, puts me in a position where I wouldn't be looking to get long here. What I would be looking is to protect, right, in case support comes in. But in case support comes in is a position of weakness and the expectation is now a new the expectation was always a new structure low so i was not expecting a complex correction here okay so because of that the strength and the momentum looking down and the buyers failing to defend all these areas i decided to let the expectation play out and then work with a more reasonable risk reward and another main swing that did not occur and the market pushed up okay into this area so i immediately said okay what do i have here well where was I originally looking to skip, um, get into this to get short? Because after all, the expectation is for a new structure low. Okay, let's draw our harmonics. What can I move and project forward? This. So I saw that the uh, one to one was in this area and immediately something jumped out at me. We have a, an advanced harmonic pattern working out here. So when I draw the ratios in here, I see that I have a exact 50% retracement. Let me be a little more precise for you, okay? Let me uh, make things fatter. So we had a 50% um, ratio here that got taken out by a couple of points. Come on, margin of error, okay? And then we had another correction slightly past the 78.6 to hit the 88%. This is a bat pattern, a very, very, very accurate bat pattern, okay? Proper anchor leg being a main swing and all, okay? Because we did make a new structure low, okay? A couple of times off of a main, you know, off of the, uh, off of the here. So we have a, a clear high and a clear low all turning into a main swing and one of the best anchor legs you could possibly have, right? And then we have a proper correction to the 50. So I'm like, okay, price is coming up. The sellers are getting their butts kicked, okay? They're not really getting there. I don't necessarily want to get short here, but I have to be understanding that. Although I have a a, 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 a bat pattern in the works, I also have to try to see whether I want to get in early somewhere around here since the sellers have been controlling things. They just lost that control in this swing up, okay? Luckily, I did not get a rotation, so I was not forced to make that difficult decision. Price accelerated up, so now I'm okay. Now I'm only going for this bat pattern, okay? I'm looking for the completion. And the completion to that comes in where this, uh, you know, if I turn on the 88%, we come here, price levels, 88, visible, okay, okay. That is the 88%. You can see that, that is the, uh, the top of that and then I come in with the uh, extensions, Fibonacci extensions right here and I draw this, I may be a little off, not too accurate, I'm being uh, respectful of the time here. We see that between here and here, okay, the pattern officially completes, okay? But I'm no fool. I also know that the sellers have been in control, have overall should have done enough to be able to move price down with ease because of what I see here. 
okay? Not only did the buyers fail to defend their areas, but the sellers were able to accumulate as a whole. It took a lot less candles to come down than it did to go up. That's accumulation. We'll talk about that some other time. We have a lot to talk about, but we do have time on our side in which this can be a progression and this channel can, can get you there, okay? But nonetheless, okay, so I'm like, now this is out of the picture. Now I'm going for the bat pattern, but I also see very good selling uh, absorption in this area. And ultimately the buyers were conquered, um, only being able to push slightly above. So as price got into this area and I saw the sellers come in, I knew I was possibly getting in early. I knew that I had a little bit of extra risk to my trade, but this is a very symmetrical pattern in an area where the, the, the buyers have been getting their butts kicked so the buyers may be running on fumes here and i may not get the ability to get that fill at the area of interest remember situational awareness areas of supply and demand violence and we have to be understanding that the zone is more important than the actual area of interest because the footprint is in the zone and not and not necessarily always in the areas of interest because this is the area of interest and yes there is a footprint there. So I felt comfortable taking it early that this would hold, but I didn't want to miss on the opportunity in case price didn't get there. And because of the situational awareness, because of what the sellers had achieved and how they have been moving price, I felt that I may not get there and I'd rather be in than regretting not getting in when I saw the opportunity present itself. Okay, so as that happened, now we're trading the pattern. So let me um, erase this erase this um, extend this this is the the pattern uh, completed a little early we extended here so we had the 38% um, which triggered the break uh, even of the pattern so I removed my wrist to break even and subsequently as price moved up I think I locked in two points I got split on two contracts which is like weird but I got split on two um, it happens actually that happens more often than, than you would think it does um, but I got split there I, I I got out for two it was actually two um, I, I think it was two uh, I don't remember the exact it, it, it's like $28 and 50 cents I don't know something like that um, but I got taken out there at a break even and I'm like okay what has changed nothing would I re-enter Yes, I'm like, okay, now we may test this area better. Now we may even complete the pattern, you know, officially, and I may even get a better entry. But what happened is I saw this and I'm so, oh, oh, that may not happen. And when I saw the power candle come in and I saw the sellers really absorb, I'm like, no, this sucks, but I have to take this. So I, I had to take that um, out of fear of missing out again. And then the market immediately had a really nice reaction um, and price got to this um, break even point again, but something is different now, right? I have even less room to protect. I have even, uh, and I got taken out when I had more room to protect. So getting out here or getting to a break even here uh, puts me in a position where I might as well just take profit because, you know, the buyers are defending. The buyers did defend and achieve something. You know, what if the sellers are losing strength? What if, what if, what if, but I'm not here to um, abandon my trade. On the contrary, I want to give my trade room. So I didn't abandon on my trade. I didn't get concerned about that, that the buyers may come in and reduce risk, almost guaranteeing a, uh, a break even and said, okay, what am I trading here? I'm trading the pattern. What is the break even of the pattern? The 38%. I have no room to protect. What should I do? Well, overall, I'm expecting a new structure low. So let me trade this pattern um, on a modified set of rules where let me give this trade the room it needs to probably materialize. I'll get to a break even here, okay? And depending how price gets there, I'll lock in there and go for the one-to-one -one or the ABCD to the downside. That was the game plan. Then price kept going back and forth in favor. Um, I started getting concerned here because the seller stopped defending and the buyer started trying to absorb here. So, but, but after that, eventually, the imbalance that the buyers had secured or the accumulation that the buyers, I'm mean, sorry, the sellers had secured here or achieved here, I should say, translated into the buyers running out of money and eventually the market efficiently moving to the downside once that imbalance took hold. Then 
as price got to the uh, as price got to the uh, 618 of the pattern which is a profit target of the pattern and we had another nice strong candle uh, to the downside I locked in there thinking that you know what I I, I believe that I'm safe here um, but I want to be also stingy here. I want to be greedy here and protect my profit. Why? Because I'm in a good area of support. I'm in a good area where the buyers did what? Defend. Look across. Absorption up. Absorption up. Uh, absorption up. Uh, well, not up, up, but, you know, they were eager to defend those areas. So I said, you know what? This was so efficient to the downside. I didn't see the buyers come in. Um, and I saw a good candle after my profit target had been hit that I said, okay, let me get greedy there just in case any of these lower areas holds, I can always get back in. Unfortunately, I got taken in. I got taken out by a little bit and then price came up. Um, I was happy that I got taken out because I said, okay, great. I'm going to get an opportunity to get in. Where was I looking? I was looking somewhere around here because I was reasonable. There's absorption here, absorption here absorption here not only that but it moved look what it did here look what it did here look at support look at the buyers trying to defend that from price getting and once price got below that guess what game over but i felt confident that the buyers are going to at least try to rescue some of this money up here and at least be able to correct deeper i didn't get that opportunity and price just continued and continued and continued and continued down okay then I had to leave, so I, I um, quit my uh, trading uh, day early. But I wanted to run through the more intricate parts of the trade. I wanted to run through the actual zones a little bit with you. I want you to see the uh, the uh, harmonics involved. Oh, and again, we talked about the uh, the uh, A B C D, right? Well, we have one here. We have one here. Okay. Um, so that was my profit target. And, you know, that, that's what I was going for. Unfortunately, I got taken out. I didn't get a chance to re-enter. would have been pretty. You know, but then I said, okay, what about in here? Do we have anything? Well, we have a, you know, clear high, clear low proper correction to this main swing and then we have here nothing to properly correct it here so we had to make a gross assessment of a harmonic situation this would be it right here and where would price likely to go did it get there as we move price forward it almost did it almost did and now it's just gone right right back up Okay, but um, shows you the power of harmonics and what the market strives for. Okay, but sometimes, even if you're selling in a market that's bullish, it's going to be hard for you to reach those harmonics to the downside, those one to ones harmonic exhaustions, and um, and it's going to be easier for you to achieve them when you're overall in line with the strength of the overall market. Okay, um, nonetheless, those were the trades for the day. That is what happened on the intraday today. I'm looking forward to trading again tomorrow. This one extended a little longer than I wanted it to, but I wanted to take the time to um, get into the spreadsheet, get into the account, create that transparency, let you know how the account is progressing. For those of you that don't follow on the thread, um, I, I post these trades almost live um, when I'm taking them and the management of them with commentary and stuff. Um, so for those of you that are not on the thread or can't get to the thread, this video as, as one of those um, um, like a backup to that and also does another thing you know when you have a losing day or you have a, a difficult trading strategy you can revisit this do a post um, session review and see if you were on the order flow see if you were on your trade plan see if you were on the overall um, strength of the market and as you can see from the previous um, um, post session reviews and from the post you can see that we're we are we are picking these turning points really really well with the ratios and the harmonics and the structure okay um but the market is slowing down the market becomes congested it keeps us in this trade longer than expected but overall the market is moving in favor and had we had more time had the market been a little more efficient yesterday we wouldn't have had that drawdown 
Um, so overall, even if you do get the drawdown, but you see the market, you know, succumb to your expectations, succumb to your analysis, succumb to what you feel is going to happen and in what area, it's a tremendous source of empowerment, it's a tremendous source of reaffirming that belief system and reaffirming the following of your rules. So that is all that I have. I'm very excited um, about you know working with this smaller account and it's, it's, it's invigorating um, and uh, I'm glad that you guys are enjoying it too. So until tomorrow, good trading guys.